My name is Eric Weistein. I work at um, Wolfram Research, which may be known to some of you as the uh, maker of the Mathematica software, and more recently as the, uh, the makers of the Wolfram Alpha website. Today I'd like to speak with you um, about the encoding and exposure of semantic mathematical content, uh, a little different track than what has been talked about so far. Um, there's another name for this talk on the schedule for some reason, which is the name it would have had had my colleague Andre been able to join us today. But due to uh, restrictions of an impending code freeze because of a new release of Mathematica on the way, uh, I am trying to fill Andre's shoes. Um, I should preface any other remarks with the fact that uh, I am new to the annotation community. I'm not sure I'm even in it yet. I am a content guy by trade and by nature. So uh, for the last 20 years, I've had this website, MathWorld, that attempts to organize, uh, describe, and communicate mathematics. And more recently at Wolfram Research, I've been involved in the Wolfram Alpha website, also on the math side through uh, semantically encoding and encapsulating mathematical objects and information for re-exposure through the Wolfram Alpha computational engine. So the type of annotation that I'm most interested in is semantic annotation that's taking some object and actually canonicalizing and describing its meaning in such a way so that you can do more uh, with the object than you could previously. So I'll just start really quickly with some words about mathematical results and how they may differ from other sorts of results and objects. Um, then I want to get into um, the guts of uh, what brings me here, and that is um, why this is the time that people have sort of come together and started feeling that now is a good time and the technology exists to create a real digital library for all of mathematics. Uh, and to, um, to introduce that, I've been involved in a project sponsored by the Sloan Foundation called the ECF Project to sort of create a small trial digital semantic library of mathematics. Um, and I'll show you some of the results from that. Uh, and then finally, I'll get into the part where uh, I explained to you that you know a lot more about many aspects of what is needed to make this, what I've just described, happen than I do. Um, people at Wolfram Research know a lot about mathematics and know a lot about computation, but as I said, we're new to the annotation game and to many other things. So um, hopefully this will be something that can go forward and will be something that involves a lot of other people and organizations and has some interesting conversations. So one unusual thing about mathematical results is that they remain unusually valid over long periods of time. Most math theorems are not valid 200 years ago and not valid today. So if you create mathematical content, it's pretty much good for the, for the long haul. The other thing about math is it is really a language of a lot of other things, the rest of science. So mathematical results may be applicable in other areas, even if people in those fields don't know about them. Uh, another tricky thing about math is that searching it is more difficult than searching plain text. You have equations, you have terminology issues. Uh, Google is not enough for searching and finding mathematics. And there's really no 21st century tool at the moment for doing a good job. So uh, just last year, a number of mathematical organizations um, got together in Washington, DC to talk about um, the need for a future digital library for all of mathematics. This was held at the National Academy of Science. It was um, sponsored by the Sloan Foundation, organized by the International Mathematical Union. And in this meeting, uh, the participants attempted to develop a plan for what it would take to create such a library. The report just came out fairly recently. I provided a link to it. You're welcome to read more about that offline. And these are just some of the, uh, the excerpts from their summary. Um, so how does all this tie into annotation? Well, if you start reading these, you, you start seeing statements like, um, Let's see. Using technology to capture important interactions between mathematicians and the literature for later sharing and reuse. That sounds like annotation. So somewhere between semantic encoding and annotation, there's a lot of work to be done here that's difficult and requires a larger community with expertise both on the technical side and on the mathematical knowledge side. So just, just to try to convince you that this is actually feasible, because it's, it's a fairly difficult problem, I want to talk a little bit about the work that my colleagues and I did uh, over the last year, which is a small prototype digital library called ECF, um, where E is the usual E, as in ebook, whatever, 
and CF stands for continued fraction. So I don't want to go into too much detail about um, what a continued fraction is. I just want to show you what we were able to put together. This was sponsored by a small grant from the Sloan Foundation, carried out over a year and a half period by a small number of researchers, including myself. And the idea was to provide a computable and discoverable versions of um, mathematical results in one chosen subfield of, mathematicals, uh, of mathematics. And it differs from previous efforts in the sense that it focuses on individual results as entities, not on papers as entities, which is the way that traditional uh, mathematicians and librarians are used to thinking about such things. So I just quickly have to say, what is a continued fraction? Um, most people in the audience are not mathematicians, so let me back up a step and say, what is the golden ratio? Most of you may have heard of this thing, the golden ratio. There's a special kind of rectangle uh, allegedly appearing in the works of um, da Vinci, allegedly occurring in the, uh, even the icon for a certain well-known uh, software company. Uh, and it's, it's basically just, you take a rectangle, you cut part of it off uh, by a square, and if what's left is similar to what you started with, that's a golden rectangle. If you do the algebra, it has a particular mathematical value. Um, so, how does this tie into continued fractions? Well, if you look at the decimal expansion of this thing, it doesn't look very pretty. It's one with a bunch of digits. If you look at the binary expansion, it still doesn't look very pretty. Now you get to what's called the continued fraction expansion. And all of a sudden, you see a whole bunch of interesting structure here. So it turns out this is kind of the, the most concise way in terms of small integers to represent just about any number in mathematics. And they have beautiful mathematical properties. Um, so we chose this because they're mathematically beautiful. They have non-trivial results about them, but they're manageable in scope meaning over a one-year period with a small number of people, you can actually go through it and get a good subsample and see what you can actually implement. Okay, so what did we do? Well, so by hand, we mined about 800 papers from the historical corpus. We extracted theorems and results and encoded them in semantic form by hand, which is a time-consuming and difficult process. We stored them in computer-readable format and we tagged things. We tagged authors, publications, references, subject information, linked to the original literature, presented in a coherent form, and verified it by computer to the extent possible. And we did all this using the, an extension of the framework developed for Wolfram Alpha. Since we happen to have that lying around, that seems a natural thing to use. So by way of a very brief interlude, has anybody in the audience actually used Wolfram Alpha or is familiar with it? OK, so a fair number of you. Uh, suffice it to say, Wolfram Alpha is a, a free website and what, what we like to call a computational knowledge engine, sponsored by Wolfram Research and hosted by Wolfram Research and powered by Mathematica. And um, it aims to take natural language queries and return computable answers. This is about the simplest natural language query you can think of, and hopefully we get that one right. I don't know if you can see, but one plus one is two. There, there is a tie-in, thank you, there's a tie-in to annotations here. Um, you'll notice we have, in addition to just giving you the answer, we actually have the ability to do step-by-step -step from any of these problems. This is a form of annotation. This is a computer-generated annotation, right? It doesn't just work for one plus one. It works for pretty much anything, anything else. And furthermore, we have multiple different ways of annotating it. If you don't like the number line, if you want to use manipulatives, we can do that too. So this is unrelated to my work. It just kind of comes for free with the... Um, the underlining infrastructure that we've built, and I think is interesting in the annotation world because it shows you can write computer programs that do annotation for whole classes uh, of inputs. Okay, let's get back to my talk. And it, it answers millions of queries a day, so it's, it's quite widely used. Um, it uses an entity property framework to represent all its data, and it, it uses a, a number of custom curated databases uh, from which it gets its data. So what did we do in this project? Well, we managed to uh, semantically code about 400 different theorems, conjectures, and results. We made a comprehensive table of identities. Uh, and we think this is a proof of concept for how you could actually go about semantically encoding part of mathematics, providing new ways to search using that semantic encoding, and discover relationships between things. Uh, this is live, it's freely accessible, it's on Wolfram Alpha right now. Um, it can do a number of things that traditional, um, 
traditional ways of searching the math literature can't. You can slice things in different ways, and that's all because of the semantic annotation that's in it. So don't worry too much about the details, but for a particular theorem, this is kind of how it would look internally in our system. And we happen to do it in Mathematica, but Mathematica is isomorphic to XML or to anything else, so it doesn't really matter what we did it in. You can kind of see there's a natural structure here. Some of this I don't know if is content, some of which I don't know is annotation. It's a little bit of each. The terminology gets interesting. So let me just show you uh, a live sample, which hopefully is working here, what this looks like on the website. Here you go. You, you type in the name of the theorem. Not all things are easy to find because not all things are named. You get a nice little indicator of what it is. You get a, a typeset description, which mathematicians like. Here you get a little annotation that shows what some of the notations in that mean. That's generated automatically because we tag the math structures in the theorem. And then you get all these details about various concepts involved, the data it was proved, the person uh, who proved it. And all of these are live. I can kick on any one of these. It will tell me a little bit about Herr Hamburger, uh, no relation to the McDonald's variety. Um, and because Wolfram Alpha knows everything or many things about other things, you just automatically get for free all these other interests. And you can write programs to access this and do whatever you want with it. So getting into a computational framework is extremely powerful. You can also do things nobody else can do. Um, is it okay if I go over a little bit during? Okay, thank you. Um, here I, I have written, don't worry about the continued fraction k too much. This is just saying I have a particular continued fraction of a particular shape. Tell me what kind of theorems apply to this. And because of the way we've encoded it in a computational way, we can actually tell you each of these theorems is applicable to the expression you just typed, and I can click on it and find out more about it. So as far as I know, the ability to do that is unique uh, in our system. And again, is just kind of we get for free by having gone to the trouble of semantically encoding the whole thing. OK. Now, um, math is a, is a uh, the math community is not as big as many other communities, might be a fair way to say it. So um, we, we can plot our statistics. We do this on Wolfram Alpha. You see three different colors here. Um, the smallest one is 2012. And the, the top one is 2004. These are number of continued fraction related queries on our site. And the good news is, this is a pretty obscure field, but people are using it. We're getting thousands of users of this functionality every month. Uh, we have a blog that shows a lot of more nice examples than I have time to do. I encourage you to read that if you're interested. Um, and we have an example page that shows you more examples. Now, don't know if you can read the bottom, but this work was cited in the NRC report that recently came out. Um, and in our view and in what our interpretation of the NRC uh, view is, this is considered a successful prototype. This is a proof of concept. It's a pretty small thing done by a small number of people in a short amount of time. But we consider this is enough to suggest it's possible to do it on a much grander scale. Not by us, but by a much larger community. Uh, and luckily, our funding agency was positive about it too, which means uh, we have interest in funding such a large project moving forward. So what did we learn? We learned that um, you need a computational infrastructure if you're going to do semantic encoding. You need natural language processing in order to provide flexible ways of accessing it. You need people with special skills to be able to take over where the computers don't. You need very detailed mathematical ontologies. I know ontologies have come up uh, very much in this meeting. They're very important in our applications as well. But the, the bottom bullet is this could all be done much more easily with the aid of automated tools without people having to go in and basically program, without people basically, you can write intelligent tools and use user interfaces that will allow this to be done by large numbers of people much quicker. So we did 400 theorems. There are probably something like 5 million theorems in all of mathematics. So 10 to the 6 divided by 10 to the 2. That's only a factor of 10 to the 4. And we're, we're four people. That's doable. That covers all theorems in math. So we need crowdsourcing, obviously. OK, this is just saying 
it's time consuming to do, but doable, and that we, we believe it's doable. So the dream is to use techniques like this, maybe not exactly this, to build an infrastructure and allow content experts to mark up and annotate mathematical results, and to use crowdsourcing together with curation and central management uh, to build a digital math library for all of mathematics. So there are a lot of challenges to making this dream a reality. I'm already over my time, so I won't go into too much detail of those. But I will say, who would be potential partners in such an endeavor? And I think the answer is pretty much everybody in this room who knows a lot about different things than we do. Because our goal would be to build tools, to build infrastructure, maybe to help with the organization, but to build on something like a Wikipedia model and get people who are interested in math, who are knowledgeable about math, to create the Wikipedia of mathematics, but not just in human-readable form, but in computer-readable form and computational form. Uh, that's all I had to say today. I want to thank the organizers, uh, our sponsors, uh, and all you patient people who sat through the first seven grueling minutes uh, when things weren't going so smoothly. Thanks also for sticking around for the last talk. Thank you. Two questions. Oh my gosh. People are awake. <laughs> so I'll take issue with one of the things you said, which is that math is usually correct, because in my experience, it's usually. Say, say, sorry, say that You said louder. that mathematics is usually correct, and I'll take issue with that, because in math. my experience. Say that again. Math, math is usually correct, and I, I want to take issue with that. You, you need to define correct. Because <laughs> in my view, it's, it's mostly incorrect. Because, because Okay, so one of the slides I glossed over and why it takes more than an hour per theorem, because you actually have to check it and verify it. Yeah, so in other words, there's a lot of typographic errors in the but, literature. But a first step to being able to find those is semantically encoding it. And exactly. as soon as you have it semantically encoded, you find out, oh my goodness, that minus sign should have been a plus. Okay, so that's, that's your vision. So that's a benefit, it's, too. It's a, you not only curate a, it, you, you correct it. I just wanted to ask what kind of uh, ontology you would propose for the math? We are not proposing anything specifically at this point. We've done some ex experiments where we've had people take, say, differential geometry and experiment that pe people in the field or graduate students in the field and experiment with how they would, what level of graininess and how they would interlink concepts. We're really only at the prototype and thinking about it stage. We haven't gotten into the, the area of thinking about anything production. But the point is they need to be significantly more detailed and fine-grained than the existing, say, mathematical sciences classification system allows you to do. So it's not an area I'm, I sort of create ontologies to the extent that I need them to do the work that I'm doing. I'm not an expert on ontologies. I know many of you are. I'd be, those are conversations I'd be very interested in having with you. Um, have you worked or, um, with polymath project? Polymath. Yeah. I'm not familiar with polymath. Okay. Can you tell me something about it? Maybe later then. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much.